In this video, we will continue talking about assembly programming as it relates to the PIC 16F 1719 microcontroller. This first video in this series of two will introduce some more commands and special function registers that will be useful in establishing if statements. And we'll talk about how if statements are not natively supported within the PIC assembly language. Then in the second video, we will get into some detail about how to implement if logic with skips uh, based upon various Boolean conditions. So please watch both videos in this series before coming to class. As we had discussed in the last lecture, the status register is one of the most important special function registers available within the PIC architecture. And the three most important bits that we're going to focus on are the carry bit, the digit carry bit, and the zero bit. And I had given an example in the last lecture period about when the carry bit might be set, when the zero bit and the digit carry might be set. But these are just important to keep in mind because they tell us about the results of operations. They tell us if there was an overflow, they tell us if there was a subtraction, whether values went negative and there was a need to borrow, they tell us uh, basically, if the result went to zero based upon a logical operation, a mathematical operation, and those are just very important as we're keeping track of what's actually happened in our code. The other register that we really are going to need to pay attention to is the bank select register. So as we had already mentioned um, in a previous lecture, some special function registers are only available in certain banks. So for example, the TRIS registers are in bank 1, the port registers are in bank 0. However, others are available across all of the banks. So status is one of those 12 special function registers that you can access no matter which bank you are in. So it's going to be very important for us to be able to change from one bank to another as we're setting up our different registers. So if we're trying to configure things as inputs or outputs, we're trying to make things analog or digital, we need to ensure that we are in the proper bank to be able to access those uh, particular special function registers. And so a very important command to be able to do that is the MOVLB. What this does is it moves a literal value into the bank select register. So if you want to move into, say, bank one, you can just say MOVLB space 1, and that will move you into bank 1. If you want to move into bank 0, you can just say MOVLB 0. That will move you into bank 0. So that changes whatever bank into the literal value, which is the way that assembly refers to constant values that you give as the argument to that command. So MOVLB space and then a number will change into whatever bank that number represents. Another important aspect to assembly programming are labels and comments. So you can label any line of code that you want, and that will be very useful for you to be able to refer back to that line, to be able to uh, use what are known as go-tos and for subroutines. And we will talk about go-tos and subroutines in more detail in upcoming lectures and upcoming slides. But uh, what this basically does is it creates what's known as an alias. So whenever code is compiled and it's put out to the microcontroller, it has a memory location. So the first line of code is put in the first memory location, then the next line of code is put in the next memory location in where the program is stored. However, if you're trying to refer back to a specific part of your code, you may not remember exactly what line it's on, or you may have added some lines above or below, and what you can do is give it a label, which creates this alias, so you can always refer back to that particular line of code using the alias. And when it is compiled, that alias just gets simply replaced with whatever the memory location is of that line of code. And so we'll, we'll see some examples of that as we go on through. So also, one thing that is important as we document our code is to put comments. Now, one thing that uh, has not been unified across a variety of programming languages is exactly what token is used to denote comments. So if you've done uh, some MATLAB programming, you may remember that you can 
use an apostrophe for comments or um, if you've done some Fortran programming, you may remember exclamation point can be used for comments. C programming slash slash is used for comments. Different programming languages use different tokens. And in this case, anything that appears after a semicolon is not interpreted as code. That is just going to be left as a comment. So comments are very important to allow you to document your code. This will be particularly important uh, maybe during a class you remember exactly what you did and you don't have to worry about it between now and when the lab is turned in. But if you're trying to share your code with a lab partner and you want them to know what you did, comments are very useful there. And in industry, they're incredibly important because you may have projects that last years and need to be distributed across multiple developers. And if you don't comment your code to document it, some other developer may not understand the approach that you're taking to solve a particular problem. So it's very important to put some comments in our code. And we'll see some examples of comments as we go through some upcoming examples. So a go-to statement, as I had mentioned before, allows us to jump from one place to another in code. So typically what happens is the program counter just advances to the next, the next, the next, the next line of code. Occasionally there is a need to skip back up to a previous line of code or skip ahead to a later line of code and not just execute things in order. Go to's are often coupled with labels. So you can say go to and then you put in what the exact label was that you had previously. This will make more sense when we see some example code. But if you want to go to a particular line that is labeled, you can just say go to my label and it will set the program counter to the location in memory that is right after where that label was in code. You can also do absolute addressing or relative addressing with go to's. So if you want to start executing code starting at the command that is in memory location 8, you could just say go to 0x08. That's going to be hexadecimal 8. Um, you can use relative addressing. And so if you say go to dollar sign plus 4, that skips down four lines. If you say go to dollar sign minus 3, that goes back up three lines of code. So that is another way for you to skip. So you can do labels as the destination. You can do absolute address. You can also use relative addressing. Typically in this class, we're going to use labels because you may insert some extra code, which may cause things that were in memory location eight to no longer be in memory location eight. You may end up changing the size of a subroutine and adding some commands, taking away some commands, which can throw off your relative addressing if you use um, values like you see here. So typically when we use go to's we are going to use some labels. So why are go to's important? Well it can often be used in decision making. So if some condition is true you want to go to one place otherwise go to another place. And what you can do is label the code that you want to execute when something is true with the label in this case one place and otherwise you could label it with another place. However, assembly does not directly support the if logic and else logic like this. We have to do a little bit of a roundabout way. And so what I'd like you to do is look at these bit tests, which will be um, so two more commands in assembly, and then follow up with the next video, which will introduce how to do if statements within assembly. And so at the heart of this, we're going to do some bit tests. So this will allow us to determine if a particular bit is set or if a bit is cleared, and then that will have some skip logic to it. So the BTFSS does a bit test on a particular bit in a particular register. And it's very common for us to use, say, the C bit or the Z bit to determine if something were true or not true based upon some operations that have happened previously. And if you use BTFSS, if that bit is set, meaning that particular bit you're checking is a one, then it will skip over the very next line of code and start executing there. If that bit happens to be a zero, then it will not skip over and will simply flow through to the next line. Uh, the BTFSC is exactly like that, but just the opposite logic. It will skip if clear. So if it is a zero, then it will skip over the next line. And if it is a one, then it will just continue to flow through. These commands are going to be very useful as we try to set up if statements in assembly. 
So at this point, please do continue on to the next video, which will introduce how to structure some if statements in the assembly programming language.